By the way, when a variable is used twice uh, in a query, I told you they have to match the same thing both times. Like if I had said likes, question mark, x, question mark, x. Um, for a rule, the same thing is true. Once a variable is bound in a rule, uh, any later uses of that variable have to agree with the first one. But it's not true across queries or across rules or even across invocations of a rule. So if I want to know about great-great-grandparent, I might have a rule that says, um, you know, this person is the grandparent of that person, and that person is the grandparent of another person. Um, and then we might end up looking for grandparent a couple of times, and there'd be different bindings for young and old each time. So it's only in a particular application of a particular rule that um, a binding is in scope. Uh, that's still a little vague. We're going to talk today, we have talked today, and we'll finish talking today, about what you can do with the query system. And on Wednesday, I'm going to try to clear up uh, what I'm sure is some uncertainty about how it actually works. Um, but first, I want you to appreciate what it can do. So it's, it's looking at a huge abstraction today from above the line and Wednesday from below the line. Okay. Um, so I used grandparent and parent in my example. Uh, a more complicated example would have assertions, mother and father, and would have a rule like this. Okay, so here's a new rule. It says somebody is somebody else's parent if either they're the person's mother or the person's father. And we could use this rule along with assertions about um, mother and father to do a whole family tree thing. You can ask, you know, is somebody my cousin once removed? And all those things that you never remember what they mean. Um, but the database could figure it out. So this is a database -y use of the query system. And in the book, um, their first example, I think, of the query system is also kind of database-y. Uh, they put in data about the employees at a company, a fictitious company, and their job titles and their salaries, and then you can ask various questions. Um, and Something like this, a different notation, but this basic idea, is how database systems work in the real world. You can ask queries with ands and ors in them, and you can invent rules and all sorts of things. Yeah. OK. What predicates, is the question, does this implementation of logic programming have access to? Um, I'm going to give you two answers to that question. The uh, elegant, logically correct answer is none. All it knows about is pattern matching. And any relations you want, you have to build. Um, the quick and dirty, grubby answer is um, in this implementation, there is one, I lied, there's one more special keyword called Lisp value that lets you evaluate any Lisp predicate. Uh, and they use that for questions about who makes more than $40,000 a year. Um, but you should try to avoid using Lisp value because you end up leaning on Lisp to do all the work for you. Um, we can, in fact, invent arithmetic 
purely in the query system 